Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the module 2 of uh, AI in continuation with what I had discussed in the previous video for the module 1. In this video I will be discussing what is super important in module 2, what you can uh, write for expecting uh, full marks in module 2 questions and these are the most uh, uh, repeated questions which I will be discussing and I uh, will be discussing what are the key points you have to write and all those stuffs. So if you want more videos like this make sure hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for uh, more content like this and uh, let's get started this document link can be found in the description description box okay so uh, there are totally six questions we'll be discussing each one by one the first question is forward versus uh, backward reasoning so before starting i'd like to uh, tell you that forward versus backward reasoning means what forward means you're starting from one state and reaching another state right that is called as forward reasoning and backward means you're starting from the final state and reaching the initial state now you might think this is stupid that you're starting from the final state and reaching initial state but let me tell you in a case uh, like for example eight puzzle problem right eight puzzle problem means it is like this in here what you have the initial um, configuration is like this okay and what you have uh, been given with is a jumble numbers for example if you are given numbers like this and some random numbers are there 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 0 like that it is there okay now your uh, step is what you have to uh, make this from here to here this is the initial state this is the goal state you have been given with a goal state you have to reach the initial state this is where backward reasoning will be used on the other hand like, like in games like chess you will be given with the initial set values and you have to reach the final state which is giving the checkmate to the opponent that is called as forward reasoning in AI also there are many problems where you will start from the beginning or uh, reach the final state or you'll start from the final state and reach the initial state these are few of the key points you have to write for this uh, problem and um for the forward reasoning you will be starting from one start state and you will be reaching many goal state if in such situation is there you, you have just one start state and many goal states are there at that time we will be using forward reasoning and if there are uh, one goal state and many starting states at that time we will be using backward reasoning okay so that was about the forward and backward reasoning super important question from exam point of view let's move on to the second super important question which is explain the logic programming why is logic programming is used because humans are very slow okay what do i mean by humans are very slow if you are uh, given with some arguments and you have to find an answer to it okay at that time you'll be uh, taking a lot of time right to do the same stuff if you are automating that stuff using some programming language at that time you'll be easily able to reach the uh, conclusion within a uh, very quick amount of time that's why we'll be uh, uh, using a language called as prologue here uh, about it what uh, uh, you have to write okay so prologue is a language which uses the logical assertions and it reaches a particular solution the first point you have to write is logic programming is a programming language uh, paradigm in which the logical assertions are viewed as programs what is logical assertions that is nothing but logical statements like for example uh, p not p or p p uh, tends to q those things are called as logical assertions by using those you have to reach a particular uh, solution okay that is called as logic programming for this one of the main thing i will be using is the horn clause what is a horn clause in the whole equation you have to have at least one positive variable for example in uh, each of these three you have one positive variable p is positive here q is positive here p is positive here that is what is called horn clause okay so uh, representation of this is given as follows for example if it is given uh, this condition which is the normal representation of logic we will be converting them into the uh, prologue form as follows okay for the uh, arrows you will be using this uh, type of uh, symbol here and for the or and and you will be using the commas and the dot here okay like that you will be representing by using example these are the two things you have to write if they ask about logic programming Moving on to the third super important question which is candidate elimination. In this uh, you might be got uh, getting a numerical as well. It means you will be given a, with a graph or something. You have to uh, not a graph a table and you have to find out the most general and most uh, specific hypothesis. Okay. For that I will be discussing in a separate video. Already I have discussed as well in a theory video. You can watch that or else I will be releasing another video soon where I will be discussing the important question from the previous papers uh, regarding this question. In this video I will be discussing what is the theoretical concept you have to write. The first thing is you have to write what is candidate elimination algorithm about it is about having some spaces in the version like for example see these are all the hypothesis hypothesis is nothing but a training example they are having a data set here from this you are selecting those training example which is relevant to you okay that is what is called candidate elimination the other things you will be eliminating in life also you will be choosing those things which are relevant to you other things you will be eliminating from your life like that you will be doing here also in the candidate elimination algorithm for that you have to consider two things the first is the general set of hypothesis second is the specific set of hypothesis by using these two you will be finding out the most uh, optimal uh, solution to the uh, given problem so the algorithm you have to write after that this marks the end of the module uh, the third uh, question in the module 3 so uh, what you have to write here is first you will be considering 
two things which is the G and S after you have done that you will be considering each training example D and what you are doing is either your training example will be positive example or it will be a negative example if it is positive you will do as follows if it is negative you will do as follows so what do you do, what do i mean by as follows it's just five lines of code you need not uh, memorize like a stupid robot you just have to understand what's happening here remove from g any hypothesis that is inconsistent with d if it is positive you'll be considering g first then you'll be considering s okay and if it is uh, the other way it will be con considering s first then you'll be considering g i'll come to that first you'll remove from g any hypothesis that is inconsistent for the positive remove from g any hypothesis which is inconsistent with d after that for each hypothesis s in s that is not consistent with d that also you will remove after i've done that one you will be adding to s all minimum uh, generalizations of h of s okay you will be adding that and if h is consistent with d then uh, you'll be making g as more general than h okay so this uh, explanation with the example i have explained in another video watch that or else you can just uh, keep in mind these few key points first you are removing from g then from s then you are adding to s then if h is consistent you are keeping it or else you will remo uh, remove uh, any hypothesis from s that is more general than the uh, another one so uh, like that you will just have to write for the negative example as well see the pattern here patterns are important remove from g and hypothesis remove from s any hypothesis for each hypothesis s in s for each hypothesis g in g like that wherever s is there you are writing as g see wherever uh, s is there uh, you are writing as g wherever g is there you are writing as s wherever it is more you are writing there as less wherever it is general you are writing it as specific very simple just write it once you'll get to know this can fetch you seven to eight marks uh in a very simple man uh, manner okay that was about the third uh, super important question let's move on to the fourth uh, super important question which is approaches and issues to knowledge representation approaches and uh, issues before that you need to know what is knowledge representation you have knowledge you have to represent it for representing that there are some approaches as well as there are some issues which are followed before knowing the approaches you need to know what are the characteristics of the approaches that is more important okay so if you just write the characteristics of an approach uh, to a knowledge representation you will be able to explain what is the approach as well so what you have to write is the four things representational adequacy inferential adequacy inferential efficiency acquisitional efficiency in representational adequacy you have to represent all the set of the uh, knowledges which are uh, present the ability to represent all kinds of knowledge that is called as representational adequacy inferential adequacy means what ability to manipulate the uh, knowledge inferential efficiency means what adding or incorporating the uh, into the knowledge structure additional information the last one acquisitional efficiency ability to acquire new information easily acquisitional means what acquiring things right that's all these four things are the approaches to the knowledge representation make sure you go through it very important question the second part of the question which is issues to knowledge representation you have, here you have to remember ircsf okay what you will remember <coughs> ircsf ircsf is the i means important attributes any attribute of the object that is so basic that they occur in almost every problem in domain if a person is important to you in your life they will be present in all the situations of your life okay relationship among attributes if there is two uh, objects here they have many attributes present right and there are some relationship among attributes which of those relationship is the most important is the main question here that you have to find out choosing granularity if you are uh, present in a situation where you have to represent knowledge you will first see what is the context right for example if you have to explain something to someone if one person is stupid one person is intelligent for the stupid person you will explain a lot of things for a small thing whereas for the intelligent person you will be explaining very few things the person and understand it that is known as choosing granularity if you are representing knowledge you need to know uh, in which level you have to represent that is called as choosing granularity next is set of objects if you have a lot of objects you will be finding out a set in which you will be representing it. what kind of set you will be representing that is called as set of objects then we have finding right structure you have a lot of information how you will be presenting it where you will be keeping the relevant information so that it is easily accessible suppose you went to a market in that market you brought some chocolates for you and your family also brought many things for themselves and they all came and crept in the refrigerator now you want to see a way you have to keep the chocolate so that it is easily accessible if you keep it at the very back at that time you have to remove all the items of your family then take the chocolate again keep all the items in that way it will become very difficult for you in the same way if you have a lot of knowledge Knowledge you have to represent. Keep all the relevant information in the place where it is accessible and readable. Okay, that is what is the fifth issue. All these issues has to be handled when you are uh, trying to represent knowledge. That was the main aim of the question. You just have to write these four points here for the acquisition uh, uh, approaches to knowledge representation and for the issues you have to write these five points. Okay, and explain with any example. 
next we have uh, resolution logic <coughs> in logic you have two kinds which is the first is propositional logic second is predicate logic i'll be discussing the algorithm and an example for both of these okay so uh, what is the algorithm i'll not uh, read through it like a stupid robot i'll explain you what the example you have to write this algorithm in your own words okay so what is the example is that you have four axioms how many axioms you have four axioms p p and q implies r s or t implies q uh, s or t implies q and t now what they have asked is convert them into clause form and prove that r is true the first step you will be considering each of this axiom converting them into clause form that's the first step okay see here the first step is convert all the proposition to the clause form after that you will be negating what they have asked they have asked r is true so you will be writing here r as not true the conversion to a clause form is very simple just that what you will be doing is you will be removing the arrows by using some loss for example if it is like p tends to q that uh, law you already know that is not p or q right this can be represented in this way as well so this thing you will be using also will be using de morgan's laws the commutative law and all and the distribution law and you'll be expanding this bracket, uh, bracket as follows and uh, you'll be representing in a very simple form this is the clause form after you've done, uh, done that the next step is prove that r is true is given so you'll be writing it there not r and after you have written not r search what is opposite to not r not r's opposite is r in all in each of these four where you can find r r can be found here as well as here so the more, uh, rep, uh, more better representation we'll choose which is this one okay after we have chosen this one there what we can uh, write is uh this same thing i'll be writing here okay after i've written the same thing here not r and r that will become nullified and what is remaining that will be writing here again finding out either p or q writing negating writing negating until you reach a conclusion where you have negated everything and empty is remaining if this situation you reach you have successfully proved that r is a contra uh, not r is a contradiction and therefore r is true okay like that you have to follow for propositional logic next you have to uh go for the pre predicate logic again i'll not be explaining this one you can go through it out right in onwards by using the example if you understand the example here basically what we are doing if you have an uh, statement like for example p goes to p or q i can write p as p or q as well so here what they have asked is for example they have asked market marcus hates caesar using resolution we have to prove okay this example is discussed in depth you can watch the theory i'll not explain again okay so uh, marcus hates caesar using resolution the first step you'll find out where you can find out hate marcus comma caesar in the given uh, set of axioms the axioms are not uh, given in this document you can watch the previous video for that i mean the theory video for that there i have explained all the axioms and all and uh, once you find out that one you'll be making substitutions if marcus is p and caesar is q at that time uh, instead of p wherever you find you will substitute q there right uh, i mean marcus there so that's the same thing i'm uh, doing here you'll be finding out where hate comma hate marcus comma caesar is there negate it and write it here not hate marcus comma caesar and substitute everywhere where you find out uh, as uh, marcus like if it is given something as like this here wherever marcus is there that you'll be substituting and writing it here so in our case it is not roman marcus loyal to marcus caesar wherever marcus was there i just substituted marcus there again i'll find out where it is similar again i keep on going until i reach a point where i'll be having null that means whatever i consider that is false if this is false means this is true true means marcus hates caesar that's how you'll be writing the example and explanation for this and write this algorithm in your own words that was about the resolution and logic super important question from exam point of view don't miss this one only this one or only this one can uh, come for eight marks okay or else they, uh, they can ask this both as well in that case you have to explain it very briefly then that was about the second last question moving down to the last question of module uh, three uh, sorry module uh, two which is the unification algorithm in the unification algorithm you have to write what is unification algorithm why it is used and uh, by using an example all these three things i'll discuss so what is unification algorithm in propositional logic you'll be having some statements as true some statements as false if i uh, unification means what mixing like this okay union like this that is what is called the unification algorithm here you have two statements true and false if you mix them they will become nullified right in propositional logic it was very simple whereas in predicate logic it's not that simple you have to consider many situations why because in pre uh, predicate logic this statement will be dependent on many other factors that dependency has to be discovered and nullified first that's why you will be using unification algorithm what it does is it discovers and hence there exists a set of uh substitutions which we can make for the given um dependencies that's uh, what the main uh, task of unification algorithm is this much you have to write and after that you have to write an uh, algorithm algorithm is very simple two step process the first step is initial predicate symbols must match 
for the explanation of what it means and all watch the theory video for each pair of predicate algorithm uh, arguments a different constants cannot match first step variable can be replaced by a constant variable may be replaced by another variable variable may be replaced by a function as well but it should not have the instance of same variable okay after we match two literals all substitutions must be made to the whole literal and finally if there are many substitutions we will be choosing the most best one if you have many options in life what uh, career to pursue will be choosing the best one same way here also if there are many substitutions that unify two literals choose the most general one and uh, which is most desired okay after i have written this one write it in the formal language uh, in this form after that uh, you have to write the example as well the example is very simple i will not touch uh, more details here p x y and y is given and p a z and b is given so if i mark it here as matching here x will be a y will be z y will be b now observe one thing x is equal to a y is equal to z y is equal to b b will be going to y and from y b will be coming and sitting in z so finally z will also become b isn't it that's what the unification algorithm will do which are the most optimal substitutions we can make to up to what level that will be done and this is the final answer so this will be written as an mgu okay so uh, so that's all uh, what is there in the module uh, 2 make sure you hit the like button subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one